Okay, good afternoon. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Um, so, as you know, as you can see, this lesson, this, this, this session is called um, Learning Through Stories. Um, I apologize. So, why, why do we use stories? Well, um, here are a few ideas. Um, first of all, the routine of stories. I mean, the majority of our children, you know, before they start formal education, have been used to listening to stories. They understand the whole sort of like listening and responding, and um, and they're patient about them. And, and this is great for us as teachers because there's, there's this routine involved in storytelling anyway, which makes them a a fantastic opportunity to expose children to language. Um, also, kids have this fantastic imagination, and, um, and stories tap into this. And within the storytelling environment, we create certain spontaneity. You know, they, they can try and make deductions about what's going on in the story. They can try and predict what they're going to see next. Um, and and, they, and um, the spontaneity results from that because they then they then will shout things out or. Well, we don't want them to shout too much, but certainly they will contribute to the telling of the story. Um, and although, you know, with the routine they might sit down quietly um, at listening to a story, at the same time you can also incorporate a lot of activity within the story, which, um, which you know, um, by getting, getting your children to do things during storytelling, um, it also means that they, you know, you can encourage them to actively listen to the story, which is you know, also great for reinforcing the language that they're learning. Um, and you know, as I've mentioned, like you know, stories are a great source of, um, of uh, language, but they can also have a more holistic use. Um, you know, there are other things that children learn from stories: um, moral, moral stories, um, moral tales. Um, they learn about sharing. They learn about bits of parts of the world that they know nothing about. Um, they learn about um, being tidy and telling the truth, etc. So there's, there's a lot of other learning opportunities there as well. And also, um, exposure, just the plain exposure to, to English, um, they, um, they can, oops, sorry, I'm just checking something's gone. Okay, hold on a moment. Okay, um, just exposure to English. Many many stories have a lot of um, repeated lines that um, that the child that, that are presented in context, so the children can learn language through that. Um, they all, there's also a lot of rhyme, which helps them to um, which, which they really enjoy and they love to repeat. And also, they're exposed to the rhythm of English, um, which is always a great thing. Um, they they maybe don't get get that outside of the classroom. Um, okay, so let's. Um, well, actually, let me give you a clue. One moment. I'm going to try and coordinate. What do you think our story might be about? Ah, maybe, maybe. Okay, all right. So, actually, the story is about animals. Okay, so um, let's look at. Um, oh, sorry, I jumped, I jumped ahead of myself. Well, um, uh, one more thing about storytelling as well, a you know, key thing about storytelling is the planning. Um, uh, there are very few of us who are brilliant at just picking up a book and, um, and, and presenting it well to students. So it's always a good idea to do a bit of rehearsal beforehand. And also, if you're going to make the absolute most of a story, you have to think of things you'll do before, things you'll do during, and things you'll do after to make them the, the, the optimum language learning experience. Okay, so now, um, rehearsing a story is always a good idea. It's never going to be as good if you just do it cold. Okay, so um, with a story like the one we're going to do, um, uh, there are different characters, um, and uh, a good idea when you're telling a story, is to adopt voices um, for the characters. Now, um, obviously, um, before, the, before, before you do the voices, you'll also be teaching the vocabulary as well. Um, and it's a good idea to get children to tell you what kind of voices animals, these animals might have. So, for example, um, with a snail, would it have a big voice or a small voice? And the children might suggest, small voice, small voice. Um, and for example, a dog, you know, a loud voice or a quiet voice. 
Um, and usually the children would say, well, loud voice, a loud voice. Um, uh, so, so these are, these are um, some great ideas uh, for, for getting the children involved in the telling automatically because they're, they're making choices about voices, etc. Now, I'm very bad. <laughs> I'm actually very bad at, at, um, at um, continuing the voices, even regardless of how many times I rehearse. I'm, I'm quite bad. But with animals, it's great because all you need to do is go woof, and they know that the person talking is going to be the dog, or meow, yeah, and they know the person talking is going to be a cat. Um, uh, a snail, um, a little bit different. Then you can just do like a little voice or something. But, but for a lot of them, a, a tortoise might speak very slowly. Um, so this is a great way. So, so before, um, let me just move on from, um, to the next slide for a second. Um, before you actually tell the story, obviously you want, you'd, you'd like to help the children understand by um, presenting the vocabulary beforehand. Um, Sometimes you might tell a story in order to present the vocabulary, so you're introducing the animals um, uh, as, as the story goes along and highlighting them, etc. But um, in this particular case, this is a story from a course book, and in the first lesson, the children are introduced to the vocabulary. Okay, so um, I, when, when introducing vocabulary, I try to pack in as much language as possible. So, for example, in this case, I wouldn't be introducing. Um, oh, let me get my flashcards here. Okay, I've got flashcards as well. Um, and I'm holding up in the work position man. Okay, so for example, um, you know, just, just holding them up and going rabbit, rabbit, rabbit is not great, it's not much fun for children. But if you flip the cards and tease them a little bit, um, uh, that makes it more engaging for them. And also, to try and get a little bit more language in there, you know, instead of just rabbit, what about it's a rabbit, okay? And it's a cat. All right. So, um, so what we're going to do now is very quickly. Um, this is this is a rather strange environment here. I, want to, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I'm looking closely at the sala, uh, at the, the chat room. Um, uh, what we're going to do now is very quickly go through um, uh, the different animals as if you were students in a class, okay? And then go and then and say it's in, in your own homes or where, wherever you are. Just very quickly go through the animals, okay? So. It's a cat, it's a dog, it's a duck, it's an owl, it's a tortoise, it's a snail, it's a peacock, and it's a rabbit. Also, you can test the children a little bit as well. Um, a, a really fun activity to do is, um, is beat the teacher, um, where um, if I say the correct name for the animal, and you repeat after me. If I make a mistake, you have to stay quiet, okay? So, it's a cat, it's a dog, it's a peacock, okay? So, in that case, the children would be quiet. Um, there's always one who'll, who'll say something, but, um, but they will, um, they get the idea eventually. Okay, so, another activity that's great fun um, is, uh, just, just, for, just for a couple of seconds, um, memorize the animals and memorize where they are. And here we go. Which one's missing? Oh, excellent, Katharina. Very quick in there. Okay, very good. Okay, we're going to try another one now. Okay, and see who's fastest. Which one's missing? Excellent. I missed you with first, but well done. Um, if the dog is missing, which one's missing? Yes, it's the snail. Well done. Okay, now, um, before, um, yeah, but when, when you're introducing the vocabulary, it's also a very good idea to introduce a song um, uh, so that they're. Um, you know, it's another way of reinforcing the vocabulary, reinforcing the language. Okay, so what we're going to do now is something that I do with my students. I, I, I have either flashcards on the board, or um, a really effect, more effective and more engaging way of, um, of getting them to really listen to the song and really listen to the language is actually to put the flashcards at different points in the room. So first of all, uh, on, you know, on the wall at different points in the room. So first of all, um, get them to you know get them to look so to call out you know, where is the where is the rabbit and they're all looking around the room for the rabbit and point to the rabbit. But then when you when they when you introduce the song and they listen to the song, 
um, they do the same thing again. Okay, so I'm going to um, just imagine you are students in a classroom, and I'm going to play the song for you. Um, if I can find it now. Okay, and just point to the animals. Okay, it's taking a little while to set up here. Hold on one moment. Okay, having a bit of a problem here. One second. Okay, that's one moment. If you go with me one moment, I'll try and get this to work. Okay. Okay, this might end up being me having to sing a song. Okay, all right. Okay, let's, let's um, okay, I'm going to have to, oh, wait a minute, here we come. Usually, you know, when you're using a book, this is a, a book, 
Um, when you're using books, um, there, there are also the peritextual um, uh, uh, features such as the front cover, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you don't have that with story cards. Um, so um, what, one of the things that but you do have, um, you do have the first story card which you can use as the front of a book. Now you'll wonder what I have here on my on my book. Um, let me just show you the equivalent. Um, let's just move on to the next slide. Oops. Okay, so um, something that's a, a really useful idea, uh, and it's good for recycling lots of language as well, um, <coughs> is um, I cover, uh, sometimes I'll cover the, um, the, the, the first story card with post-its with different um, language that I want the children to practice. And they can ask me then to reveal, to take off different post-its to reveal parts of the story. So, for example, in this case, let's take these ones away. Ooh, now, what might the story be? Okay, and so you can gradually sort of like get excited about, about the story. Another thing that I do as well is, um, move on to the next one, is this. Um, um, just, I've got a card, a piece of, I use a piece of card, and I hide the story, the first story card behind it. And the children, you can, the children are uh, trying to guess what the story is. They say what they can see through the little hole. We also have a little chant. Um, and all the children go, one, two, three, four. Move the card a little, move the hole a little more. Okay, and so I just move it a little more. One, two, three, four. Move the hole a little more. And so gradually you're teasing them and getting them excited. And also talking about what they can see. Okay, so. Um, in this particular case, we have a story about a little rabbit. Okay, so um, so here you can see. So who's this? A little rabbit. That's right. And who's this? Do you think it's Mummy Rabbit or Daddy Rabbit? Okay, Mummy Rabbit. Mummy Rabbit. Like, and what's this? It's a feather. Okay, so, and then your children are ready for the story. Now, I'm going to use um, story cards for the video, and also you have the stories on the slide, which I think will be much clearer for you. Um, okay, so, <coughs> we're going to start the story. Um, okay. And I'm going to try my voices. Okay, so, it's a sunny day, and little rabbit is going for a walk. Ooh! What do you see? Mummy says, it's a feather. Ooh, is it your feather? No, it isn't. Look, I've got fur. Ask Owl. Where's Owl? There, on the wall. Try to coordinate story cards and slides. This is good. Okay, here we go. Okay, this next one. Okay. Hello, little rabbit. Hello. Hello, Al. I've got a feather. Is it your feather? No, it isn't. It's a multicolored feather. I've got brown feathers. Ask. What animal do you think is next? Ask dog. Where's dog? There, in his house. All right. Ruff. Hello, little rabbit. Hello, dog. I've got a multicolored feather. Is it your feather? No, it isn't. I haven't got feathers. I've got fur. Come on. Let's ask. Let's ask. Hmm. Now, who are they going to see next? Are they going to ask duck or snail or tortoise? Okay, so you've got a choice now. Multi but this is, this is, okay, you've got a multiple choice here. A is duck. B is snail. And C is tortoise. What do you think? Excellent.
Excellent. Okay, so let's ask Snail. Where's Snail? There, under the flower. Now, does Snail have a big voice or a small voice? Small voice. Okay, so. Hello, little rabbit. Hello, Snail. I've got a multicolored feather. Is it your feather? Ooh, ooh. No, it isn't. Look, I've got an orange shell. Oh, sorry. I just realized I haven't changed the image. Sorry, multitasking here. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, oh, love it. Oh, feather, fur, shell. I don't know. It's a feather. A duck. Duck's got feathers. Little rabbit says, Where's Duck? There, on the water. Okay, now I'm doing action here at the same time, which you probably can't see very well. Okay. Quack, quack. Hello, little rabbit. Hello, Duck. I've got a multicolored feather. Is it your feather? No. It isn't. I've got white feather. Oh, I don't know. White feather, brown feather, multicolored feather. Oh. Is little rabbit happy or sad? I think he's a little sad, that's right. Okay. Jack says, quack, quack. Look at the animals under the tree. Let's go there. Little rabbit, owl, dog, snail, and duck go to the big tree. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry about the slide thing. I'm just going to tell it without the, without the story told now. Okay. All right. So go under the big tree. Okay. And here we go. Okay. Right there. The little rabbit says, is it your feather cat? No, it isn't. Meow, I've got fur. Is it your feather tortoise? No, it isn't. I've got a shell. Look, look, multicolored feathers. All right. Oh, Peacock, it's your feather. Yes, it is. Well done, little rabbit. It's a beautiful feather. Can I keep the feather? Well, yes. Thank you, Peacock. Okay, so, and that's the end of the story. Sorry about the, the slide. <laughs> And um, card thing. Okay, so you will, if you will have noticed, I mean, it's difficult if you were just focusing on the slide, but during the course of the story, obviously, you would be pointing out things in the picture to help children follow, follow the story. Um, and similarly, you know, as you noticed, there was a repeated, there was a repeated refrain, is it your feather, and where's, where's dog, etc. And these are all things, you know, during the course of the, the storytelling, um, you can, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for that, um, you, can, um, uh, you can invite the children to participate because of this repetition. Okay, so, next, um, so here's the story as a whole. Another thing that you can do after the story, of course, is get the children to look for something in the story. Now, you can see here, there's a snail with a brown shell. Okay, I'm not sure how big your image is, but can you find the snail with the brown shell in the images? So if we say that if, if this is number one, two, three, four, which image is it in? It's 
is actually in number two. It may not be very clear to you. There it is. Because the other snail has an orange shell. Okay? All right. Now, um, one moment. Um, something that you can also do um, after you've told the story is, let me move it on. Okay, I'm just concentrating on slides now. No more, no more story cards. Okay, so uh, a very simple activity children can do after the story to see if they've understood it um, is, um, is to say which order the animals were in. So obviously the first animal was the rabbit. Um, can any of you remember which was the second animal? It was the owl, okay, and the third one was the dog, and then we had the snail, and then the duck, yes, and then the cat, the tortoise, and the peacock. Okay, so this this um, this activity helps. Um, to help you to see that, that the children have actually remembered and have, have taken in some of the story. Um, okay, and then another follow-up activity that's really useful as well is, um, is to get the children to draw their favorite animal. Um, and there's lots of talk about that. And um, I, I find as well that um, um, when I'm getting children to draw their own animals, um, so, oh, excellent, in fact. <laughs> uh, when, when, um, when I'm getting the children to draw their own animals, what I, um, what I try to do is find um, black and white images as opposed to the flashcards um, and put them on the board because um, black and white drawn, it, drawing, uh, drawings, because they, they tend to, you know, young children, they get a bit frustrated if they feel they can't reproduce exactly the same as is in the flashcard. And also it means that they use their imaginations as well when they're coloring in, which is always great. Okay, and now, so obviously we've done the story now, but obviously we want to, we want to um, extend it and really take advantage of it um, uh, to reinforce the language. Um, what you can do, and this is an activity that my, my children absolutely love this, is um, to stick the story cards on the board or on the floor, depending on where you have your children sitting, um, and get them to reorder the story. So they can listen to the, the, the soundtrack, um, so you don't have to read it again, listen to the soundtrack, and, um, and order the story. So I'm going to try this again. Okay, one moment. I know the story disappeared. I'm going to get it back for you. Oh, maybe not. Oh, here we go. It's a sunny day. And little rabbit is going for a walk. Ah! What is it? It's a feather. Ah! Is it your feather, Mummy? No, it isn't. Look, I've got fur. Ask how. Ask how? There. Okay, and at that point you would pause and ask the students to volunteer to place the first card. So we're not going to go through all of that, um, but you, you get the idea. But they really enjoy it, and it makes them sort of like, you know, they're really actively listening as well. Okay, and now, um, just moving on, so um, that's one way of revisiting the story, because, you know, the more, the more you do it, the more they're going to become confident with the language as well. Um, Something else that, um, that you can do with the story, too, is that, like um, somebody mentioned earlier on, I noticed mini flashcards. Let me find mine. Um, I have them. I have a pile of stuff on this table. Ah, oh, here we go. So here are my mini flashcards. Okay. Um, so um, I get my children to um, keep their mini flashcards in, a, in an envelope like this. Okay. And, um, and you know, it, depends, it depends on, I mean, people do different things. Um, I get my children to use their envelopes of mini flashcards in their book. So if they're taking their book home, they can use them at home as well. The only danger then is that they might not bring the mini flashcards back. Um, alternatively, you could store them somewhere and, and get the children to use them. So while the story is being told, the children can then hold up their mini flashcards um, uh, and, um, and they really enjoy doing that. Um, 
Um, and they can also order their mini flashcards according to where the animals, when the animals arrive in the story. Um, and they really, you know, they, it, it keeps them concentrated, it really means that they're really listening as well. Okay, now, moving on. Another thing, of course, is um, finger puppets. So, your finger puppets, so they can hold up the little finger puppets as they hear them in the story. They love that. I find um, the simplest, and because in the end, the teacher is going to have to make the finger puppets. And the simplest thing to do, I find, is instead of having the, the little um, branches out that you fold around the finger, I just do little oblong ones like that, just fold them over and put sellotape on either side. It's much, much faster to prepare. And again, I would get them to keep their finger puppets in, um, in their, um, their envelope. Um, what, what I do as well is, especially with, with younger children, um, get them to choose two finger puppets that they're going to use. Because if they try and use, for example, in this story, there are eight finger puppets. And, and it will just be, they will spend more time on the floor trying to find the finger puppet that they lost than actually listening to the story. So keep it simple, okay? Um, then, um, what you can do as well, when you've got the mini flashcards and stuff, you can, another way of extending the story is to, um, is to change it. Okay, um, so for example, in this case, um, uh, imagine that little rabbit um, found a shell instead of a feather. Okay, so what you would do in that case is take this, this is a snail shell, so take the shell, snail out of the story and start all over again and randomly, oh, snail and rabbit, sorry, snail and rabbit out of the story. Okay, all right. And then, um, to retell the story by pulling the different, different random flashcards out. Ask, so, is this your, is this your shell? No, it isn't. Ask Peacock. Where's Peacock? There. Okay, and you can have maybe, um, you can have flashcards on the wall, and then speak to little rabbit speaks to Peacock. And is, is this your shell? No, it isn't. I've got multicolored feathers. Ask tortoise, where's tortoise, etc. And you can just recreate the story, but you're still practicing a new language um, and giving the children more confidence to practice it. Okay? Um, next then. Um, okay, uh, so this, that's basically what I was saying. So like bring out the, the, um, the animals um, at, uh, um, out of order from the original story. Also, a great activity that you can also do with the mini flashcards is just children lining up the mini flashcards. Um, back to back, um, one or, or with their book, with holding a book between them, one puts out a mini flashcard and then dictates what order the mini flashcards are to their partner and the partner does, um, uh, orders their mini flashcards in the same way. Okay, and then um, something that's great um, you know, with, with stories, of course, is to get the children to do little role plays. I saw some of you mentioning role plays and toys as well. I haven't, I haven't actually got any toys with me today, but yes, if you can find different toys of the animals, it's great as well. Um, <coughs> uh, in this case, um, so we've got, uh, we've got little, little, the little rabbit talking to dog, and, and children can very easily pick this little dialogue up, um, and a great way of, of doing it is um, inviting one of your more confident children to come to the front of the class, and you are one role, like maybe little rabbit at first, and, and your, the child is the dog, and you say, hello little rabbit, hello dog, is this your feather? No, it isn't. Ask snail. It's simplify the dialogue. Excuse me. And, um, and the children then, um, you, then you reverse the role, so the, the child practices the other way as well. You can also get lines of children doing the same, doing the same so that one, one, one group is the little rabbit, one group is the dog, get a lot of practice. Um, and then they can they can do a little role play themselves. Um, somebody oh that's the one that's the slide okay. Um, somebody mentioned masks. Um, my children use a lot of masks as a role play. Um, so there's three different types of masks there. So this one um, is I'm sure like a lot of you have used this, this kind of mask uh, with the string in. Um, I find I find that terribly fiddly when you're doing when you're doing things quickly with a, a large number of students. Um, here, this is, a, this is easier than the stringy thing. It, it's easier, um, but um, we've got a bit of card behind and then just um, putting that around the children's head. And it says, it's less sticky than the, the string. But this one, um, having the mask 
on a piece of card. So he, you can see uh, uh, having a last story rather on a straw. Um, that one I find works best um, because you don't, I, you don't have, it's not attached to the child's head. You don't actually have to, to um, knock the, um, the holes for the eyes either because they can move from side to side and it's just far easier um, all around for the teacher. Okay? Um, now, um, moving on. Um, other things that you can do. Um, so here, for example, this is a, this is, um, a collage that we made on our wall that the children absolutely loved. Um, they've all got their little um, animals that they contributed, um, and the peacock was the main part of the story. Um, and then um, we, what we did as well um, was that you know when, when we were learning to read the words, stuck the words under different animals as well. And then um, we created an entire an entire um, uh, landscape for, for the children to practice in, practice with. Um, okay, so, so practicing where um, the animals are. So where's where's um, where's owl in the tree? Where's snail on the water? And what I would get um, children to do is um, is like somebody would be at the front of the class, and another child would move an animal and then say, where's rabbit, uh, for example. And the, the child at the front of the class, we call it the hot seat, would then guess um, where the rabbit was. Is it on the house? And all the class saying, no, it isn't. Is it under the, under the tree? No, it isn't, etc. And they all really enjoyed that. And they're getting a lot of, a lot of language practice as well. Um, uh, oh, it hasn't moved on. Hold on one second. Oh, no, hang on. A, sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Um, and also, you know, if your children are um, learning to read and write the language, you can you can play around with. Um, I, I use I put lots of vocabulary and things like that on the wall to help them, and um, and color co color coordinating as well. The color color coordinating the words as well helps them to make choices and put words in the right order. Um, an activity that my children absolutely love, um, and it's a great way. You know, if you can get children working in pairs. And they're going to get so much more practice. Um, and this is an act of oh, sorry, this is an activity that that mine do. Um, so um, they get that. So the same thing as you can see. So uh, uh, um, on the slide, and they choose. So they get a little card of animals, and they choose. So I use um, blue tack, um, and they choose an animal. Usually they go for the peacock. They seem to love the peacock, and then secretly put the peacock somewhere in the picture, okay, and they try and guess where the peacock is. Um, so imagine that I am your partner and I've just hidden the peacock, where do you think the peacock is? Okay, so you've got your children to practice, is it in the tree, is it on the water, is it under the tree, is it in the house? Is it on the, on the roof? That's very advanced language. Is it on the house? Yes, it is. Okay. Well done. But that's something that they will quite happily sit and challenge each other for a long time. Okay. And then, um, okay, one moment. I just need to jump ahead for a second. Okay. Something else that came up in the story, of course, was, um, apart from your prepositions and a little bit more like the house and the tree and the water, um, you also had... Can anybody guess? Oops, no, wrong one, wrong one. Not yet, I'm not finished yet. Okay. You also had body covering. Well, there would be shapes as well, but you also had body covering. So, um, so something that, that evolved out of this is, um, you know, initially you could get the children to place the animals um, and revise body covering. So this is like a more holistic, um, more holistic bit of learning going on. Um, and then um, what I do is like I put these put these on the wall, and one of one representative of each of each of the the body coverings. So for example, um, the peacock for feather, and the snail for shell, and the cat for fur, for example. And um, and then what I would get I would invite the children to to come and place different animals. So you and you can introduce animals that go beyond um, what's actually in the story. So for example, you might introduce um, I've lost one now. you might introduce a bear or a lobster. Okay, 
Um, and then, um, and they, they would they would enjoy sort of like putting recognizing the, the animal body covering and putting it, putting it under the, the right place. So, for example, here, can anybody notice a problem? Mm, peacock and peacock's in the wrong place. Peacock and tortoise, great. Something that's, that's a really great engaging activity as well is um, is when you change something like this, do a swap, and then get you know it could be at the beginning of the lesson. The children might just come into the classroom, and you get them to like notice immediately notice, and it's and, you know they're spontaneously using the language, which is great. Okay, so. Um, we're just coming to the end of this. Gosh, this has gone quickly. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to ask you, do you have any questions? Oh, no, not that one. Here we go. Sorry about the slide mess up. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, so that, that's a story for um, six, seven-year-olds, and it's in quest one. I'm trying to answer these questions as, as we go. Um, I, well, the, material, the materials are, are from quest one, but, um, but there's lots of other things that I just made myself. Um, um, yeah. I think Caroline would be the one to answer that one. I'm sorry, I'm just referring, I'm just answering questions when I see them come up, so I'm not giving them much context, which would be very good of me. Yes, yes, the activities that um, somebody just mentioned, these activities are great for upgrading to, for older students as well. And they are, and I mean, the more you get involved, the more, the more you get the students involved, in the story, giving them a reason to listen, um, and, and you know, um, extending the story at the end, getting them to use their own imaginations, role play, etc. Um, they, they, it's just fantastic language practice for them. I think I think the thing with stories as well, absolute beginners. <coughs> um, absolute beginners again, it's exposure. And I mean, I think I think if you've seen there that you know there are many different ways of revisiting a story, and it's you know it's patience. The more exposure they get, that then gradually they'll 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 learn the language. And also, you know, the first time, you know, the, 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 at the very beginning, yes, they're absolute beginners, but they, they soon learn the skills of listening. They become more accustomed to listening to English, so they get better. Sorry, I'm just checking. Okay, I'm trying to read your questions and answer them as well. Okay, could we please have the materials? Yes, um, I, I, I'll pass that. Could we please have the materials? I'll pass that over to, to Caroline. Hi, that's really a cute machine. Um, if you would like to, we can make the slides available in PDF form. On the website, along with the recording. That's fine. Is that okay with you? Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, yes, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You can absolutely make the materials available to you all. Okay. Okay, I think that's probably it for questions. I'm just going to stop the recording. Okay, super.